it's Olivia and welcome back to Live in Literature. Thank you so much for all the love and support I've received on these last few videos and if you would like to please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Okay guys, I'll be honest, I had a different video planned for this week when I was going to post but then A Court of Silver Flames came out and I just busted through that book. And so I just finished it yesterday. Here it is, A Court of Silver Flames. Here's my copy. There's a very hilarious video that I'm going to insert of me getting the book for the first time. Okay, I have to show you something. Look what came today in the mail. <gasps> it's so pretty. It came today and it's so gorgeous. It's so big and so thick. Look what it looks like next to the other ones. Like, look at that. It's enormous. I'm so excited. <laughs> And I needed to do a book review. I was like, I had a different video planned, but I was like, you know what? No, we're doing a book review, book review of this book right now. Like, I can't wait to talk about it. I need to talk about it with someone. And for those of you who have read it, you know that you're dying to talk about it too. Yo, Stacy! Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, baby! I have many things to say about this book. I had a lot of expectations, and I'll be honest, I was let down in some areas. That's shocking. But overall, I thoroughly enjoyed the book. I thought it was incredible. Once again, like every Sarah J Moss book, it ranks fairly high in my list of best reads. I'm not surprised. This video will contain spoilers, so if you have not read A Court of Silver Flames, do not watch this video. I will be doing a spoiler-free review of this book in my next video that's going to be next week for my February wrap-up of all the books that I've read in the month of February. So I will include a spoiler-free review of this book in that section, and so just keep an eye out for that one. But until then, this will be the full and complete spoiler review discussing every detail of A Court of Silver Flames. So let's get started. I would like to preface also very quickly that this book is not for people 18 years and younger. This is an 18 years and old. This is an adult fantasy book. It has all the adult things in it. So just a warning for all you, all of my younger readers out there, this is an adult fantasy book. And so just be warned when you pick it up. A Court of Silver Flames. What did I think of the book? I like, I'm almost like flabbergasted. Like I'm almost like speechless when I try to describe the book to people. I don't know what happened. Like, every, like everything happened in this book. Like everything. You're everything. Like I was so moved by so many things that occurred in this book. So I, oh, I don't even know where to begin. I'm just so excited. I'm like brimming with all the excitement. I'm so excited. Okay, let's start at the beginning. We have Nesta. Nesta is in a terrible dark place. She hates the world, hates everyone. She's in this terrible place after she lost her father in the war and after like her experiences with Cassian and like the guilt that she holds against her family and her sisters and how she treats people. It's a whole big mess. But Nesta comes through. And I'll be honest, by the end of the book, I really like her. I really did. I didn't think I was going to because I'll be honest, I kind of held a grudge against Nista after what occurred in A Court of Frost and Starlight with her fighting with the family and stuff. But I just came to love her through her arc. She had so many struggles and like inner struggles and personal demons and like not wanting to live and exist because she just hated herself so much and so much self-loathing. And I love that she was able to overcome that. And this is something I will say that's like a little bit of a difference between A Court of Mist and Fury and this one is um, I feel like with Feyre's healing, Reese was a huge part of that healing. Like he was a huge, huge part of the reason that she was able to like come out of like her grief. But in this one, it felt like Nesta's story. It felt like Nesta was overcoming this by herself. And like it kind of, at first I was a little bit like kind of chafed against me. I was kind of like, um, like... I got Cassie and was supposed to like, you know, be like your hero and like, Honey, you mean Hercules. Come and like, you know, like mix things together and like help you out. And he did. He did. He did an amazing job. He was perfect and lovely and fabulous and gorgeous and amazing as usual. He has a face that looks like it was carved by angels. Oh, he sounds dreamy. But like in the end, he, he even said himself, like the only one who can drag Nesta out of that pit of despair is herself. He can't do anything about it. And I like that he was like, this is her journey and she's going to come out of it one way or another. And like, by the end, I was, I loved her. I really did. I was like, you are a person who I want to see succeed. Like after I know like why you hate so many things and why you just like feel so much, I just... I do, I like, I like you and I want to like understand you. And like, 
I loved the dedication at the beginning of the book, so I'll read the dedication to you guys because it's really beautiful. I was like really moved by the dedication. But she also says, for every Nesta out there, climb the mountain. <laughs> and I love that. I love that she addressed all of her readers as if like we are the we are Nestas. I'm Spartacus. Like as in we all have our own interpersonal grief and conflict within ourselves and self-loathing and hatred. We all we have all these we have all this baggage but we are still gonna climb the mountain. Climb to the top and make it and be our own heroes. And it just was, it really moved me. It really did, it really moved me, her arc. I thought it was one of the best arcs of like all of this like Sarah J Moss characters. It like really, really moved me and changed me. So thank you, Nesta. And to all the Nestas out there, I hope that you guys continue to climb the mountain. It's the climb. Other things to discuss. We have Cassian, which like I thought that Cassian, his position that he was put in in the book was so interesting because as a, so Reese was kind of giving him responsibilities to be like more of a court, courtier, courtier, I don't know how to say that word, more of like a spy, like more of like the political workings instead of like the war stuff. Cause he's a general, like that's what he's used to. And he had to get kind of put outside of his comfort zone for a lot of portions of this book. And I actually really enjoyed seeing Cassian in a position where he can show off his intelligence in that way because we already know that he's like he's an intellectual on the battlefield like he is meticulous precise like he's a he's just he's the general <laughs> here comes the general oh here comes the general the pride of mount Vernon. here comes the general <laughs> he is that guy but i love seeing him in his intellectual side where he could like try to show people that he's like i'm more than what people make me out to be i'm more than just a general i'm a lot of things and i really like that about him i like you Nesta and Cassian's relationship. Now, it's hard not to compare A Court of Mist and Fury to this one because it's it's so hard. Because Nesta and, and Feyre's journeys are kind of similar in this, they're coming from places of grief. They're, I think Nesta's is a, was a lot more aggressive and a lot more of like hatred and that kind of like grief, whereas Feyre's was more like desperate to like overcome what she had done. And so I think it's really hard to compare their, their journeys, but I, I, I will try not to. But when it came down to their relationship and the things that happened in the book between Cassian and Nesta, I didn't love it as much. What? I'll be honest. I think that like there wasn't enough deep conversations between the two of them. I wanted more moments of like tenderness <laughs> and like moments of like understanding between both of them. And so they have that undeniable sexual tension and physical chemistry. But I think that like they're they should have this like Sarah should have taken more time to like unpack the mental implications between them two and the mental emotional connection between them two. I know you were disappointed. Don't get me wrong, they had a lot of beautiful moments. Like they had the moment after Solstice where they like came together and finally like admitted their feelings. And Nesta finally admitted she's like, I just feel like I don't deserve you. You're you're too good for me. Cassie's like, I can cry, and I'm just like, oh baby, Cassie's like She loves you and he she finally admits it and they like the mating bond is together and they finally like admit to the mating bond like and to be perfectly honest and i can't believe i'm saying this there was just too much of too much physical intimacy in this book for me i was like sarah like there is a lot in here like to be honest like i was sweating there were many times where I was, like actually sweating i'm like whoo like Ooh. I swear I'm sweating like a sinner in church. Like, this is like where we're at. Like, they're just doing the thing. But like, I just thought that I- I wanted more moments of like tenderness and more of like the sweet softness of their relationship. There were so much, so many times that they were going so hard and so fast and so aggressive and like angry, like angry at one another and then it just like exploded. I just wanted some more like softer, gentler moments between them. Ew. I just thought that it was a little not classy. I would have liked it to have been kept a little bit classier. I would have liked, there was a line in the book that I actually really liked that Azriel says to Cassie and he's like, he basically just says like, don't show your hand yet. Like, don't reveal your whole hand yet, Cassie. And like, save, save some, some stuff for later. And I kind of wish Sarah had done that with this book. I feel like she like kind of revealed her whole hand. She had her, she had her hat full of tricks. She revealed them to us and we were all kind of like, whoa, that's a lot of tricks. Chili rabbit, tricks are for kids. That's a lot of tricks. You're kind of showing the whole hand here. like. I, I don't know what else you have left in that hat. Really, like I really don't. There's so much more. Like don't get me wrong though, like, like there were some scenes, there were some scenes that like. You know what I'm talking about, like 
life. You've read the book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's good times. I mean, I get it. Like, it's Cassian. Like, for me, it's like, whoa, it's Cassian. Like, pfft. I mean, if I, I'm, pfft, I'm drooling right now just thinking about him. I think that she could have inserted some more, like, softer scenes between them, some more, like, emotionally romantic scenes. I think that emotionally romantic scenes are pivotal to a to a book. And I think that it just didn't have enough of that. And that's why it isn't ranked as high in my rating. Okay, so we've talked a lot about like my like personal like feelings of the book. Now I just want to discuss some scenes with everyone and some like predictions that I have. So a couple of the scenes that I was excited that I loved. The bog scene. I loved Azrael and Cassie and Nesta going on their little like quest together to go to the bog. And I also loved seeing more of um the world. Like I love seeing this like really dark gross part of this like fey world that like no one has even touched like it was just like such like i could totally picture the scene and it was so gross and i loved it disgusting like the scene with the kelpie who like pulled nesta down to the ground where she found the mask and she became like the queen of death and it was like that was everything like she's a queen like queen moment I she's an icon she's a legend and she is the moment i was here for it. i was like yes like nesta like save yourself like, this was a moment where, like, it call all could have ended. And I just, like, loved that she, like, stepped up to the plate. She found the mask. She put it on. She destroyed that Kelpie. And she just was like, no. Like, I cannot be tamed. I am the bringer of death. Like, I am death. And I just was like, yo. Like, yo. Like, whoa. Like, like queen status. status. She, like, killed it. Like, that was one of my favorite scenes. Our female friendships in this book. Holy crap. I am obsessed with the female friendship in this book. We are talking about Nesta, Gwyn, and Emery, the three, our little trio. I love that Nesta like found her own group of friends and that she has these girls that she's so close to. And I love that these women talk about their trauma and they talk about surviving and they talk about their past, like their past mistakes and things that they regret and the things that they grieve. And I love that all three of them, like all three of them admit to carrying baggage and they don't want them, to, they don't want to lose their friends because of it. And all, all of them agree, like, we will never abandon one another because we are bonded through our experiences. We're bonded through our friendship. And you are such a good friend. You are a beautiful, talented, brilliant, powerful musk ox. Thank you, ox, for keeping this ship afloat. And I'll be honest, I thought it was so cute, the little, like, sleepover scene with the girls and they all were, like, messing with the house and, like, had to like the mini pegasus and like the bathtubs and it just oh it made me laugh so hard and they made friendship bracelets like come on isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen and i'm obsessed with emery and gwen i think that they're both amazing i'll be honest i cannot wait for azriel's book i'm so excited because you know with how this last one went with gwen and azriel keep making eyes at each other i'm like here for it i'm going down with the ship <laughs> i am here for it i'm here for gwen i love her I absolutely love her. I think she's amazing. I think she's so strong, so powerful, so beautiful. I just, I cannot wait to see where that relationship goes with Azriel. I just, I'm so excited to read his book. He's going to be amazing. I'm obsessed with him. And one of the reasons why I'm obsessed with him is because of how he treated Nesta in this book. So a lot of people that, at least from like the people that I've like, I follow and stuff, and I've seen a couple of their like rants about the book already. A lot of people are upset with how the inner court handled the Nesta situation. And I'll be honest, there were a lot of times where I was like, I am pissed off at you guys. Like, how freaking dare you treat her like that? Like, the impudent, the audacity, the unmitigated gall. Like, she's a human. Like, she's a human being. Fine, she's a fey being, whatever. But she's, like, she's a human being. Like, you're treating her like she can't even handle to be around her own self. Like, you're treating her like a child. And honestly, it made me kind of mad sometimes the way they treated her. Like, when they wouldn't tell her about the swords and, like, they kept it from her. Like, just debating whether or not they were going to tell her and they voted on it. It's like, I would totally feel the same way. I would be like, what the heck? Like, you didn't think you could trust me with that information? You had to hide it from me? Like, I don't know. It made me kind of pissed off. But Israel, the thing about Israel that I love is that he never, like, treated her different. He never gave her... A second glance he was always like i will always give you the benefit of the doubt he always gave her the benefit of the doubt he always saw the best of her and when he gave her the solstice present and it was like the little reading light for her books oh my gosh i literally died like i just like <sighs> i died i was just like that is so sweet of him so sweet of him i just ugh. so tender so precious i'm obsessed with him i literally cannot wait for his book can we not wait for Gwen and him? Because I'm like, that is totally happening. I don't care what anyone says about Elaine and Azriel. It's not happening. It is totally not happening anymore. We are going into Gwen and Azriel, and it's going to be everything. It's everything you ever want. I loved the blood rite. 
that was everything. The fact that those three girls got thrown into the blood right because the Illyrians were so pissed off and they had to fight and claw their way just to get to the top it was everything. They totally showed those guys up. They totally said, we are women and we are strong. I was here for it. I was bad run, cause baby, we got bad blood. I absolutely loved that. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. But I will say for the blood right scene, where the fetch is Balthazar. That was the name of the, of the Illyrian who like helped her that one time and then he just like disappeared and I was like, where the fetch did you come from? Like, wh who are you? Like, where where did you come from and who are you? Like, I'm so confused. I don't know where he came from and I'm just like, like, who are you, dude? Like, what is going on? Like, I'm confused. But anyways. With the blood right scene, when Nesta draws the line in the sand, draws the line in the dirt and defends her friends and has them walk up to the top, I... I gasped. I was just like, I was so moved by her, her performance, essentially, like her moment. And she is the moment. She decided, she just was like, no, like, I will not let the, you two die. Like, you are too important to me. I am drawing my lines right here at the pass, and I'm not going to let these Illyrians move. And she freaking destroyed them. She freaking destroyed them. And it was amazing. It was everything it took everything in her to fight those guys and she was better than every single one of them but she worked blood sweat and tears worked so hard to become a valkyrie and that was everything oh there's so much i just i just want to talk about like there's so many things that i keep thinking of that i just like keep wanting to bring up a couple of moments that made me really emotional i have like a couple like i have like three big moments that i was like sobbing tears like literally sobbing like there were some moments that really really got me one moment was when nesta like after she reveals to Feyre that like Feyre is could die with in childbirth with the baby because of the wings and stuff like after she does that and she goes on this like long hike with Cassian for days of like silence just nothing just silence and not even speaking to him and they finally get to the top of this mountain and she just falls like she just bawls her eyes out and cries and cries and cries like finally revealing all the things that she's been feeling for so long Nessie cried and she cried she cried by the heart and I felt for her, I really did. In that moment where she is on the floor or on the ground sobbing about how how she hates her hideous life. She hates how how who the person that she's become and she hates this person. And this moment that she had with Cassie was one of the few moments that I really, really enjoyed where he just held her because he's just like, I know, but it's not too late. It's not too late to come out. It's not too late to take my hand and come out. like. Come with me. Come back into the light. Like, you don't have to live like this anymore. Like, you just have to forgive yourself. And that was one of the biggest lessons of the book was forgiving yourself. And I loved that. I love this moment of, like, forgiving yourself is most important. And I love that. I love that, like, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks of you. And she doesn't really care what anyone else thinks. She just, she just can't stand herself. She couldn't stand the person that she was. And she overcame that, like through the training, through working with the women, through her friendships, through Cassian, through her sisters, like through all of it, she finally realized like, she's like, my life isn't as pathetic as I, as I thought it was. And I can make something better of myself. Like I can be better. And it was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. Like it was a moment for me that like rocked my world. And I just like finally could see the whole arc of like Nesta's like overcoming. And it just, it was really touching. It really moved me. Other moments that had me literally sobbing. Um, I freaked the freak out when Cassie like stabbed himself and we thought that he stabbed himself and killed himself. I freaked the flip out. I was screaming. I was like, absolutely not. No, we're not pulling another Reese This is not happening. It has to be a joke. I do not believe this is happening. And then he's like, yo, I faked it. Like, no, nah, I didn't actually hurt myself. And she just is like, you freaking idiot. And then they, she finally like accepts the mating bond. And she's like, I love you. You're my mate. We're going to be together forever. And I'm like, yes. Yes. And I like was starting to cry. And then they were like, Feyre. And I was like, oh no. Like the baby. Like, oh my gosh, Feyre and the baby. Like, and I'll be honest, this is, these were the moments that like moved me most is like right here at this very end with Feyre dying and oh my gosh, can we just like for us, hold on, let's just take a pause. Let's put a pin in it and just really, let's just put a pin in that moment. Hold on. The fact that Reset and Feyre made the bargain to go together in death. I literally cannot. I cannot believe they did that. They pulled that. I literally was just like, it was one of the things that like I wasn't expecting. But that, that moment of like, no, we're tied together. Like, we'll both die. If she, if she dies, I die. And I, if he dies, I die. Like, I just was like. I, like, didn't expect him to pull that at all. I was like, are you guys freaking idiots? But also, I was like, that's so romantic. I would 
die for Riley. Oh, God. I was, I literally was like, that is the sweetest and most romantic thing ever. Like, <laughs> I like cried. I was just like, oh my gosh, like that's so romantic. But also, no, like you both can't die. Like this cannot happen. <laughs> and Cassie and Israel were like, no, no, that's not my brother. No, like that's my queen. Like, no, no. Ooh, so emotional. I, I don't under, I didn't understand a one word you said. Ron, ah. are you okay? Ron. <laughs> okay, back. Taking the pin out. Whoop. The moment when, like, so they finally, like, take the baby out, and then, the, like, and Feyre, like, oh, and Feyre, like, basically is just, like, lying there, like, basically dead, and Reese screamed. <laughs> Utterly shocked. Like, I, ooh, because it never shows him, like, Reese is always usually so perfectly composed and perfectly, like, perfect because he's race like let's be real practically perfect in every way but in that moment where he screamed for Feyre I was moved to tears <laughs> yeah. so I just was like oh my gosh like this is the end and he realized what was going to happen and his mate was being taken from him he's like I'm going with her like it was a moment that like rocked me but then we switched to Nesta and she like plays the harp and the in the crown and she has them together in the mask and she just is like no like, I will not allow this to happen. So she plucks the harp and it stops the time. And she tells Feyre that she loves her for all that Feyre sacrificed, for everything that she did. She is like, I love you. And that was the moment that rocked me to my core. I sobbed like a fetching baby. I will insert a clip. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> I sobbed like a a baby I just couldn't even like it just broke my heart and it was just like so beautiful to see that like Nesta was like I don't want to lose you but like and I love you like I have ne never said it to you I've never told you that I love you but I love you and it was just like this healing moment of like full forgiveness like full circle she finally admits she loves her sister and it was beautiful and wonderful and then she gives up her powers to save Feyre and I just was like, oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm like at the end of this book and I just need to record my my reactions so that you guys can see it when I upload the video. Like, I cannot. It was emotional, moving, passionate. I cannot. I literally was sobbing, sobbing like a fetching baby. And then here's the moment. Like, I know you. all these moments are ones that like have really like broken me and I'm like, here's the moment, but like really like, okay. I don't know why this moment got me more than any other moment in the whole book. I like laid down in my pillow and like cried like so desperately hard because after this moment right here. <laughs> so obviously Nesta saves Feyre. She gets, she get, finds the power. She gives up her power from the cauldron to have the knowledge to save her. Saves Feyre, saves the baby. Oh my gosh, Nyx, how cute is that? I'm obsessed with that name. It's so freaking cute. I'm just like, oh, the baby. I can't. Anyways, it's the moment where Reese gets off the bed after being with, after like being with his wife for a second. He's like, he's with his mate, it's fine. He gets off the bed, he looks at Nesta, gets down on his knees and takes her hand and he's sobbing and he's like, thank you. And she kneels down, takes his face, looking at him and hugs him. We're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> I can't like I literally can't like I'm getting emotional just thinking about it because like he hated her so much like they hated each other like Reese and, Reese and Nesta couldn't stand each other they could not stand each other and in this moment it was like a brother and a sister like finally like seeing the light and he was just was he couldn't even believe that like she would do this for her and do this for them for their family for their future he like he she did this for them and I think it was just like this moment of like, of like acceptance. I think it was finally just like this moment of like pure acceptance, acceptance of Nesta and everything that she went through and like Reese finally accepting her. And I don't know why that was such a big deal to me. I just always had issues with it because he's like not like, I don't know, he's just not like a, he's just not like that kind of person. I don't know why it moved me so much. I just think it was this moment of like clarity of like, both of them finally seeing each other for what they are. And I like that Nesta and Reese are kind of the same, where they both feel things so desperately and they would do anything out of loyalty to save someone they loved. And they finally like have this like reckoning of like her holding his face and then finally like hugging him, being like, you know, this moment of like love. I couldn't, I literally couldn't, I broke down. I was a hysterical freaking mess. I was a literal mess. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then we have the moment like right after when Nesta tells Cassie and she's like, I adjusted my like anatomy so like we're good for when we want to have kids. Okay. I was just like, oh my gosh, you're giving Cassie like a future, like everything, he, like you're giving your guys your, your future, like your relationship, like, <sighs> and she finally just like accept it, accepts it. And then also I love that she was like, I want a ceremony. Like I want a wedding ceremony. Like I want it. I want the mating ceremony. He was like, oh freaking K, let's freaking do it. And then of course Sarah didn't give it to us. And I was like, of course she didn't give us a ceremony. How freaking dare you never give us a wedding ceremony. We're never gonna get a wedding, I swear. The only, the closest thing we got to a wedding was Tamlin and Feyre, and thank goodness that wedding didn't happen. But we're never gonna get a wedding out of her, I swear. It's not even fair. Okay, so, to wrap up the video, basically, I would just want to say, like, I really liked the book. I really did. There were a lot of things that I really liked about it. I'll be honest, I was more interested in the last, like, three, two hundred pages than I was in any other part in the very beginning. I think that like the int that we had like the core intrigue with like the dancing with with Eris and Nesta, we had the 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 um the blood rite and we had like the 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 Valkyrie, we had the moment with the queen, we had the spying, like the whole, all of that stuff that happened in the last like half of this book was way more interesting to me than like anything that happened in the very beginning. I would have loved to have seen more core intrigue, more plot stuff, more of this like more adventure things. Like, oh my gosh, like when Nesta and Cassie went into the prison and they fought like Lianthus or Lianthus. I don't know how to like explain his name, whatever, it doesn't matter. But like more stuff like that, like all of that stuff that happened, like the last half of the book was way more interesting to me than anything that happened in the first part. And I wish that more of the book had been like that. So to wrap up the video, basically, I loved the book. I was very moved by so many things. I definitely need to like get into a discussion with like everyone about this. There are so many more things that I didn't get to talk about that I was super passionate about in the book. And there are so many predictions that I have for the next ones and like all the things that are going to happen with everyone. Like I'm so confused, but I'm really excited. But my overall star rating of this book, I give this book four stars out of five. I don't think I can give this star the fifth rating because it didn't, it didn't exceed my expectations. It just kind of met them and I wanted it to exceed expectation and maybe that's on me maybe that's on me for having too high of expectation and so just for those of you who do care and want to know where this ranks in my Sarah J Moss ranking I have 11 books in the rank this is now number 12 that's going to be added to the ranking and I decided that if you remember from my last video called the Sarah J Moss ranking video I give you my full rank of all the books I decided that this book ranks in fifth place so it's right it's right above Queen of Shadows for me. For me, this book ranks high enough to be considered one of the one of her best books that she's written, but it doesn't rank high enough for me to consider a favorite forever. I think that this one was really beautiful and it told a really beautiful story and I'm glad that I read it. I'm glad that I understand Nesta and I'm glad that I understand more about Cassian and their relationship. I love both of them dearly and I'm really glad that I read the book. I just don't think for me, it ranks high enough to be considered one of my absolute favorites. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please feel free to like and comment and subscribe down below. In the comment section, I would love to start a full on discussion about this book. Or if you would like to start a real discussion about A Court of Silver Flames, feel free to DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is oliviahope927. I would love to have a full and frank discussion about this book with anyone at this point because I'm dying to talk about it with somebody. But please, 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 please feel free to reach out or reach down in the comments to comment about the book and what you thought about it and like your opinions of things and certain things that are going to happen in predictions. I would love to hear all of it. But thank you guys for joining me and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey guys, it's Olivia editing the video um, in my bed uh, looking like this, super cute. Um, I would just like to say if you've made it to this far into the video, congratulations, you're a real true homie. Um, this is a long freaking video, but I just felt like I had to include all my feelings. And this is definitely isn't even all my feelings about the book. I'm still coming to terms. So like this is a couple days later after I've like filmed this. And I just would like to conclude a little PSA to say, I think my feelings with the book have changed a little bit. And I think I want to give it a higher star rating. I think it deserves a 4.5 out of 5. I don't want to give it that fifth star. I think I was a little bit too harsh on the, um, my criticism on her physical intimacy. But I also like, my, my, I was conflicted because I was like, do I want to stick to my guns? Like when I first originally posted it? Or do I want to just like say what the heck and just like say what I want? And so I think I want to give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I do still believe that the physical stuff in the book was a little bit too much. But I also think that like, 
it was good times. So like to each his own. I just like, it's still a 4.5 and I still am leaving it in fifth place in my Sarah J Moss book ranking because I still think it deserves that place. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.